I'm Ed Buckler. I'm a USDA ARS research geneticist in Ithaca, New York, and I'm also a professor at Cornell University. I'm Jason Wallace. Uh, I'm a postdoc here in the lab. My name is Cinta Romay. I'm a postdoc. My name is Kelly Swartz. I'm a graduate student. My name is Alberto Romero. I'm a third year PhD student. I'm Carl Kremling, a graduate student here in the Buckler Laboratory. My favorite part of this job is when I can run an analysis, when I get the data back and look at it and see something I wasn't expecting or see something that no one, literally no one in history has been able to see before. When you actually are looking at the data and analyzing your data and you're sure you made your analysis right and you look at the results and you're, wow, what's going on here? We have to be creative and come up with a new way to try to you know, analyze the data to make sense of it and test out our favorite hypotheses. I really like to get out and actually touch the plants and see the plants and really be able to see the differences with, between them. Asking questions and getting the answers is what I like the most about doing research. What's exciting to me is, is both the discovery of new things and knowing that pretty rapidly actually what we're, what we're figuring out will be applied to, to crops. We're all curious. Why would you not want to use your curiosity and just explore what's out there? Starting with my biology professor just at high school, she was great. She was the one that teach me about genetics. And I realized, ah, I can learn how to program life if I go into genetics. I've always enjoyed the sciences, but throughout high school, I thought I was going to go into medicine. That lasted about one semester of college. I, I discovered research, and I thought it was amazing because it uh, allowed me to actually understand how things work. For the first time discovering that the, the genome between almost any living organism is made of the same thing, it's made of DNA, yet somehow we all end up being quite different. It was all because of this high school teacher who first introduced me to the, the exciting side of genetics. I've always been interested in, in plants uh, and also in people. It's the kind of work, the kind of work that has an impact on people's lives that you can actually point to and say, people are better for what I have done. Actually helping people. That's what this is really all about. It's, it's not just about the plants, but it's about making food more available to more people in the world at a smaller environmental impact. With better genetics, we should be able to make a crop that would be much more efficient and reduce the land impact and overall energy impact of our agriculture. I want to have some sort of impact to better human society. Specifically, I want to help with global food security. It's a big issue now because there's increasing demand and consumption, but all the pressures that make it harder to produce food are getting stronger as well due to climate change and other factors. I'm helping to achieve that goal and people is not gonna starve and we are gonna have a better world, more sustainable and a better place to live. And that's what I really like about my job because I think I'm doing something meaningful. It's a very important crop for the world, and it's also genetically and biologically fascinating. It's a very important crop in the region where I was born. Corn is one of the most consumed foods on the planet, and we have more genetic tools developed for corn than anything else. So really anything that we, we think we can learn from corn about the way a plant genome works can be applied to almost any other crop. There's more diversity among all corn strains than there are between humans and chimpanzees. The interesting thing about doing research in corn is the amazing change it went through during domestication. There's a varieties of maize that grow all over the world that people have adapted to their uh, local environment over the last 10,000 years. And by preserving that biodiversity and then using these advanced genetic tools we have, we can move that diversity around so that we can have a crop that's highly productive when there's a drought out or if there's flooding out. We grow corn in New York, and North Carolina, and Iowa, and Missouri, uh, Wisconsin, but then we also collaborate with people who are growing uh, varieties of maize in China, or in Mexico, in Sub-Saharan Africa. This past summer I had field plots in, in southern Arizona, down by the Mexican border. During the summer you go to the field, uh, so usually it's here in Aurora, uh, in New York. Most of my work happens in front of a computer screen. Um, in fact, I joke that I usually see more corn at the dinner table than I do at work. 
increasingly uh, biology is being done, as with any big data discipline, behind a computer, uh, analyzing the huge volumes of data that we have. There's no way we could analyze three billion base pairs of a genome uh, across hundreds of thousands of organisms without the tools of big data. And so if you're a young person wanting to see a really hard challenge, biology and genetics is where big data comes uh, together with some really important societal questions. In the summer, it's field season, and so I'm oftentimes out in the field helping with the corn plants, uh, doing pollinations, taking measurements, taking tissue samples, that sort of thing. So you get up early in the morning, go out to um, pollinate the corn. After that, you can do some measuring and setting up for the next day. I go and stay with the plants, I look at the plants, I take data. And what I like to say, you play with the plants a little bit. And then uh, we have the other uh, rest of the year, where you mostly uh, you get your data from the field and you need to analyze it. It involves a lot of programming, a lot of reading, and uh, a lot of coffee for both. I've pretty much been to every country uh, that grows substantial amounts of corn and also to every state in the U.S. that uh, grows various varieties of corn. I've gone down to uh, the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center in Mexico. I've also visited locations in Kenya and in India. I'm actually living about 3,600 miles away from my home, so I guess I do travel for my work. I have a site in southern Arizona. Um, where I actually am required to go to grow my corn and won't grow in the north, so that's been that's been nice. I've also got to go to Portland or Sweden or uh, I'm going to China, uh, Indiana. Because in North America we don't have a long enough summer to, to grow more than one season of corn, we also have to go to the, the tropics to grow another season, and so this allows us to get two generations in per year. The goal we have in corn genetics is to be able to take the two and a half billion base pairs that make up that genome and be able to read that genome and be able to predict how a corn plant will grow in any field in the world. We want to know what every single gene, every single DNA element, and every single thing in the genome is doing, how they interact with each other, how they interact with the environment to make a corn plant. And you can actually help to make discoveries that are gonna help to feed the world. We may be able to breed a crop at 15 times the rate that we've been able to do in the past.